Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host today. Just a few points of logistics before we get started. Uh, today's presentation is being recorded, so look for an email from me uh, with a link to view the session on demand. Uh, please do share this uh, throughout your organization. Uh, perhaps even use this as part of a lunch and learn uh, for introducing others to the topic today of TWI. Due to the short nature of our webinar, we will not be fielding questions, but if you do have questions, feel free to send them to me and I'll forward those along to our presenters. Today's webinar is really a lead up to AME's annual conference, uh, this year being held in Chicago and takes place November 4th through the 7th. Uh, you can learn more about that particular event by visiting www.ame.org slash Chicago. Uh, I, I mentioned Chicago and the AME conference because our presenters today, uh, Oscar Roche and Joe Fisher, will both be at this year's conference. Uh, and who you see on the screen uh, along with me right now is Oscar Roche. Uh, you'll hear from Joe Fisher here shortly. Um, Oscar is the director of the Training Within Industry and Visual Workplace Australasia. Uh, and then in a short while, you hear from Joe Fisher, who is a management consultant and also a chair of this year's AME conference in Chicago. So for now, Oscar, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to you. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. And thank you for that introduction. And once again, Thank you for the opportunity to participate. And the last thanks is to the people who um, have chosen to spend this half hour with um, Joe and myself. So just as a, as a point of introduction, the title there says TWI's role in the lean enterprise. And, and I guess what should be stated pretty early on is that is that standardization is, a, um, is clearly known to be a cornerstone of uh, lean and the lean enterprise. And it's, and, and the reality is that it's very difficult to get to standardization. Things, things tend to be working uh, against you. Many things tend to be working against you um, at the, at the coalface, at the frontline leader position. And the other point to uh, mention there is that TWI offers um, a, a set of skills, if you like, or a, a means to develop skills that act as countermeasures to uh, help those things that hindrance uh, or, or uh, a hindrance to standardization. And one probably last thing to note is that the definition of standardization as far as I'm concerned and as far as this, is con this webinar is concerned is quite simply standardization is what should is when what should be happening is actually happening. So this webinar will be in <clears throat> sort of three parts, I guess, a bit of an introduction to TWI by me, which will be about 15 minutes or so. And then Joe, who you can see over here on the right hand side, will give an, uh, an overview of uh, AME and the Chicago conference. And then I'll come back quite specifically and talk about um, the interact, the tour sites and the TWI interactive panel, which is something that um, uh, we've, we're aiming to, we will be providing here. So we're here today on August the 27th, obviously conducting this webinar, and then we'll be discussing what's available to you on November the 4th and 7th. And, and this is not something that's sort of developed, this um, sequence, the tour sites and the interactive panel is not something that's developed in the last sort of couple of months. It actually has started at a conversation that Greg McDougall and I had at the San Diego AME conference 12 months ago, oh sorry, um, November last year, where we spoke about um, the opportunity to bring TWI a bit more to the surface amongst lean organisations and how we really wanted to offer something a little bit more than just a breakout <clears throat> or just a, a um, you know a discussion if you like. So what we've tried to do is a bit of a continuum here to allow people to see and ask questions at a tour site and then attend an interactive panel. So really this has um, been about six or nine months in its formation. So this, for the first eight or 10 slides, I'm just gonna give you an overview of uh, TWI, very basic introduction. So firstly, why? Why should we consider something like TWI 
And the, one of the reasons for this is, one of the big reasons, the main driver is frontline leaders are regularly confronted with issues or potential issues that lead or will lead to non-standardised work. And quite simply, non-standardised work represents risk. If there's non-standardised work occurring in your area, then there's going to be some form of risk, whether it be a safety risk, whether it be a quality risk, whether it be a cost risk, a productivity risk, <clears throat> there can be many other drivers, they're the main ones. We said that standardisation is a cornerstone of lean. We've, I've said that um, the reality is things tend to work against you, not for you. Uh, that's the reality. I think most people who have had a crack at standardisation could relate to that. And the reality is also that the people who are jammed, the meat and the sandwich, tend to be the frontline leaders. They're the ones who are posed with the challenge of standardising the work that's happening. So let's look at what skills they need and how we can help them through, through TWI. So as, as I said, people issues frequently faced by frontline leaders that increase risk are, <clears throat> the first one is the not doing, the person who's not doing. Now in, in some TWI documents or institute documents, you'll see don't care there. Uh, I've changed that and I'm a bit reluctant to use that to not doing because not doing can be more, there can be more reasons for not doing than just don't care. But the reality of not doing is they can do the work, they know how to do the work, but they're not doing it. And that can be for more reasons than don't care. This is really brought to me about a year ago, and I've mentioned this in previous webinars, when we were working at an organisation where quite a senior manager was very capable of a particular task, knew how to do a particular task, and they weren't doing it. And it was certainly not from not caring enough. And that's where I thought, oh no, we're not quite on the right track there. We shouldn't be using don't care. There was other reasons for that. So not doing is one of the um, uh, issues that frontline or leaders have to um, uh, address. The second one is don't know, can't do. That's simply the person doesn't know how to do the work or can't do the work. They may know about it, but they can't do it. So that's the second one, far more straightforward than the first. <clears throat> and the third one is where the work's too difficult. It's too difficult to do properly, therefore people take shortcuts or the average person finds it hard, so they try and find some other means. So there are three people issues frequently faced by frontline leaders that increase risk. TWI offers um, some countermeasures to that. So the first one is if not doing, we need a, the skill of leading. So if someone's not doing something, uh, they're not following by, no, by, um, by virtue of the words, a good leader uh, will have followers. If someone's not doing something, they're not following, we need the skill of leading. If someone doesn't know or can't, and or can't do, then we need to develop the skill of instructing. And if it's too difficult, then we need to develop the skill of improving or improvement. So there are three skill-based counter, counter and preventative measures. <clears throat> So TWI offers training and um, practice patterns, uh, and I emphasise the and practice, just doing training of any sort and any skill, whether it be golf, tennis, TWI, or whatever it might be, just training won't get you anywhere. There needs to be training and practice. So TWI offers three opportunities to train and practice, which will develop the skill. And the first one is, job relations. So job relations, if trained and practised, will develop the skill of leading. Job instruction will develop the skill of instructing and job methods will develop the skill of improving. And just back up on job relations, I'll put that first because I believe it's probably one of the most important or is the most important, is job relations can be viewed as a preventative maintenance system for people. If we're not practising job relations, or something similar, then we're not preventatively maintaining our people. And if we're not uh, providing input to our people and maintaining them for want of a better word and building trust, cooperation and feedback, then the people are gonna drift. Just as if our machines, if we don't maintain our machines, our performance of our machines will drop off. If we don't provide um, something to our employees on a human level, to preventatively maintain them, in other words, uh, keep them performing at the required level, then they will drop away and quite rightly so. 
<clears throat> so job relations can be viewed as a preventative maintenance system for people. So let's have a look at each one. Uh, sorry, before we do that, TWI, each of those three patterns, or three training and practice patterns, job relations, job uh, instruction and job methods, has a common have common attributes. They're based on PDCA, they're four-step methods and they're based on PDCA. Uh, no surprise there really, with, you know, without going into the history, TWI, as it's known now, was born, if you like, through the War and Manpower Commission in the 1940s in the Second World War, around the same time <clears throat> as Deming was bringing the PDCA patterns, PDCA pattern to the surface, if you like. So really, it's no surprise that the two come together. And when I understood this, that the, those three uh, practice training and practice patterns are um, PDCA based, sort of gave me some confidence in my very early days of TWI that we're probably onto something that's pretty solid. So let's have a little bit more detailed look at, a, at these at three um, training and practice patterns. One is job relations is about getting results through people. And a gentleman by the name of Dave Hyam from Boeing said to me, if people on your team don't trust your intent, it'll be difficult to make progress. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, with, um, with Joe and Jeff, who's the marketing guy with AME, <coughs> we had some discussion about this slide about a week ago as to whether we should put this slide in and the recommendation, uh, sorry, the quote from Boeing. And the reason we were concerned was because the reality right now with the Max 8 trouble is that Boeing, people, Boeing's intent probably isn't trusted right now. And I think what that's making it quite clear is it'll be difficult for them to make progress. So I came to delete this slide from the presentation <clears throat> and I thought to myself, Boeing are in a bit of trouble now and it'll be difficult for them to make progress because we don't trust their intent. So that's, then I thought, no, this illustrates the whole point. We need to leave this here. I know I've just been talking at the very high macro level and we're bringing it down a bit lower when we're talking about results through people. But, but we decided to leave this slide in because I think it, it really makes this point clear. So Dave, it was a webinar about a, a month, uh, sorry, about a year ago that Dave made this statement. Dave was the site director of Seattle at the time and has now got site directorship across two or three other sites. And I just love the statement and I really believe it and I've seen it when um, in tr trust, when intent is not trusted in an organisation or a department, very difficult to improve, actually very different to just produce standardisation. So I would like you to consider this, uh, the picture's not overly clear, I'm sorry, <clears throat> but Dave Hyam's the guy in the middle and there uh, he's discussing uh, the 787 landing gear door with um, a guy by the name of Alan on his left and Darren on the right. They're in Winnipeg. This was an, a couple of years ago. So the question I really ask, I ask myself when I see this photo, and I'd like you to ask yourself, I don't know what Dave's saying to Alan on his left, but when Dave walks away, if Alan didn't trust Dave's intent, it's very unlikely that he'll follow whatever it was that Dave was talking about. Dave's one of the greatest proponents of getting people to trust his intent that I've ever met. He uses, he's actually a job relations trainer. Um, and I just think this slide carries a very strong message. So job relations is about getting results through people, giving respect and getting respect. Job instruction is a way to get a person to quickly remember how to do a task correctly, safely and conscientiously. That's the sort of the, the line uh, of, that goes with J.I. job instruction that defines it. A way to get a person to quickly remember how to do a task correctly, safely and conscientiously. And I'd just like to introduce a, a line from Toyota Talent written by Leica and Meyer some time ago. And Toyota Talent, the book, is essentially about how Toyota has taken job instruction from when they first started it in the 60s and 70s and, and to what it's morphed into now. But Toyota Talent is essentially about job instruction in the Toyota world. And there's a line in Toyota, in Toyota Talent that says, the identification and presentation of key points is the single most important aspect of the training program, uh, process. So in JI, when you study JI and uh, practice JI, 
there's two parts that really focus in on this is getting ready step two we prepare our recipe our, um, our document if you like our job instruction breakdown and there's a huge emphasis on identification of key points and it is the most hardest skill in my view um, but the one that gives you the most reward as this line would suggest is the, is the identification of key points <clears throat> and then when we ready to train and we turn our job instruction card over and we follow the four-step pattern for delivery the presentation of the key points along with the reason for the key point is where we really lock in um, uh, they have the opportunity to lock in standardization but remember we're only addressing at this point the don't know can't do we've still got to address the wants to do or uh, will do which comes through job relations so job instruction addresses the don't know can't do that we saw on the red earlier job methods Job methods is a practical method to help a leader make the best use of manpower, machines and materials currently available to them. And you'll notice on the slide that currently available to them is in italics. Uh, the reason for that is job methods is not about um, shutting the place down and a three day Kaizen event. Job methods is not about how to write a CapEx, for example, capital expenditure form, or complete a capital expenditure form for spending a lot of money. It's saying to the leader, what manpower do you have available to you? What machines are available? What materials are available? And how do you best organise those today, tomorrow and next week to get the best possible outcome in terms of safety, productivity, quality and cost? <clears throat> so it's a practical method to be used daily um, at the work front, just like the other two are. Practical methods to use daily on the job front, at the front line. So that was a very, very brief overview of TWI. The three skills we're trying to practice, uh, sorry, the three skills we're aiming to develop, which are countermeasures to those three problems we saw earlier in red. Three skills are leading, instructing and improving. And TWI is a way of providing this opportunity. I'm sure there's others, but TWI is a way of providing, providing this opportunity through job relations, job instruction and job methods. So that's our introduction to TWI, very basic, um, just to give a, a flow in to the, um, the next section that I'll follow after Joe. So I'm now gonna hand over to Joe Fisher, who will talk uh, you through the next couple of slides, which are about the conference and about the um, and what's happening in Chicago. So Joe, thank you for joining us and over to you. Thank you, Oscar, um, and welcome everyone. My name is Joe Fisher, if you've heard. Uh, I'm a volunteer that uh, does a fair amount of work for, for AME, which is the Association for Manufacturing Excellence. I've been a volunteer for, I believe it's 16 years now, and I've been involved in many different areas, but primarily conferences. So what I'd like to talk about is this year's international conference, which takes place in Chicago at the Hyatt Regency Chicago, which is a hotel which is a couple blocks away from the center of Chicago. So this is not one of those conferences that's in an isolated uh, corner of the country. This is right downtown in Chicago, which is in my mind a very cool place to go to with lots of um, activities to do and places to go and see and eat after the conference. Uh, the Hyatt Regency is offering a special conference rate. Uh, you can see that on the website, and you'll get the website address shortly, but it's $249 a night. It's uh, non-refundable, and you have to book it before September 6th um, if you want to take advantage of that rate, and that's an excellent rate for Chicago. Next slide, please, Oscar. So this is the 35th annual conference that we've had. Um, one of the things that makes AME um, unique amongst associations is we have a very high level of participation organization with volunteers. Uh, the paid staff is actually quite small, headquartered in Chicago, uh, but the volunteers will do many of the things like, for example, um, all of the content at the conference is arranged by the volunteers. So the conference theme is leading on the edge. And this represents the leading on the forefront and leading people with outside the box thinking, 
Also, it represents breaking away from old ways of management, managing and a shift toward collaboration and fostering a culture of advancement, development and respect for people. Um, our conference is a conference of practitioners. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer exchange of experiences and best practices. Although uh, consultants do participate and there are partners in this conference at the beginning and the end of the conference. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we move into the next slide, please, Oscar. So if you've never been to one of AME's conferences, um, the format is kind of interesting. We have nine keynote speakers. These are uh, renowned speakers that are selected from a, a series of criteria. Some of them are inspiring. Some of them are experiential. Some of them are opportunities for learning, but uh, there are many, many prominent keynote speakers. They generally start every day's session um, there is a speaker during the lunch period, and then a speaker at the end of the day as well. Now, in addition to that, we will have in Chicago around 25-ish kind of tours. So these are tours for those participants that want to come and would rather uh, see these principles in action rather than just hearing about them. So they all have the opportunity to sign up and go on a plant tour. Uh, it, it may not be a plant, it may be an office, it may be a warehouse, um, but it's a tour where they can see these best practices and they can select. And we've arranged these tours so that every participant at the conference can go on one tour. Now, having said that, many people that I've met actually come to the conference and only go on tours because that's what they like to see. But nonetheless, that's uh, entirely up to you if you're attendee. We have 30 workshops. Now the workshops are the part of the conference, <coughs> excuse me, where the consultants um, partner with us. So workshops are generally on the Monday preceding the conference. And in Chicago, there will be some workshops on Friday. We have 33 workshops. They're mostly half day. There's a few full day. Uh, workshops are an extra charge. It's a few hundred dollars for each workshop. Um, and there's a whole range of workshops on many, many different subjects. You have to register in advance. Um, you can possibly get into a workshop, but they tend to fill up very quickly. So we encourage people to have a look at the website, see what workshops are offered, and um, sign up for those that they're interested in. Uh, exhibits. We also have an exhibit area at the conference with 40 or so uh, exhibitors this year. Um, these are people that may sell supplies, they may be consultants, they may be educational institutions, um, but they have something to do in and around continuous improvement or lean. And it's an opportunity for the attendees to spend some of their spare time walking around and, and uh, actually networking with these providers of services uh, if that's what interests them and if they have any use for them in future. Uh, the other thing that we have, and probably the main part of our program, is 50-ish sessions. These are best practice sessions. These are um, generally not have anything to do with consultants. These are practitioners. So this is the peer-to-peer -peer part of the program, uh, with a few exceptions. And I, I say exceptions because there's a variety of different types of sessions. Some of them are just a straight best practice session where uh, employees of a company will tell you how they did a certain thing, how they implemented lean or how they advanced with lean. Uh, or it could be possible that it's a panel discussion where there may be a consultant involved. Um, and there are also participative sessions as well. So there's a variety of sessions that you can pick. These are all free and you can pick and choose whichever ones interest you. And hopefully, if you're bringing a, a large number of coworkers with you, you'll kind of spread around and uh, glean what intelligence you can from these sessions without everybody going to the same session. Uh, now, limitless, limitless networking. So there are going to be somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 continuous improvement, lean kind of people, mostly practitioners, some consultants, 
and it's a wonderful opportunity for you to talk to other people that are trying to implement the same goals that we all are trying to implement, that are having the same challenges and so on. So this is the other um, advantage of attending our conference. Next slide, please, Oscar. All right. Thank you oh, very much. I, sorry, Oscar, Thanks can I just, can I just oh. say one more thing that I, I should have mentioned and I apologize? Yes, uh, of course. One of the things that we're offering to the attendees of uh, this webinar is that if you choose to register to come to the conference, uh, if you use the code TWI10, you'll get 10% off the current price. Um, this will be good for the next couple of weeks. Um, and I hope you take advantage of it. And I apologize for interrupting Oscar, but I turn things over to you. No problem, Jeff. That was important. That message was important. No problem at all. So just for the last five minutes, I'm going to now talk specifically about um, that second pillar that I showed at the start, <clears throat> which is what the opportunity you're going to have during uh, the conference to understand TWI uh, a hell of a lot more deeply. So there's two things happening. One is there's tour sites where you can go see and ask questions, particularly those related to TWI as we know they've done a considerable amount of TWI work, and then the opportunity to ask lots more questions through the interactive panel. So the two tour sites are NORMAC that produce gas fittings and valves, and the second one is SNC, <coughs> excuse me, SNC Electric, which produce clearly electrical components. The interactive panel is going to be headed by Pat Graup, who's the head of our uh, TWI Institute. And then there's a representative from NORMAC, uh, sorry, from SNC Electric being Boyd Rice, uh, Andrea Lee from NORMAC, and Jose Domingo from Sloan Valves will also be there. Just a little bit more detail on firstly the tour sites where we can go see and ask questions. NORMAC uses hand-drawn standard work and metrics charts to make problems visible as it says there. Uh, you guys can read that. A3 thinking to collaborate with cross-functional teams, but the important bit is they use job relations to get results through people. NORMAC adds a people element to every problem-solving initiative. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about them because I have I've had a uh, fair bit to do with NORMAC over the last six months. Short, I'll talk about that shortly. <clears throat> At SNC Electric, standardised work documentation is in use to improve quality and help provide process stability. Uh, that's a statement they've provided. And look, what I've added in there is a comment from Art Smalley, uh, which says, a number of you may have seen it before, long before there was value stream maps, Kaizen events, pool systems, etc., there were the TWI foundation elements on the Toyota workfloor. These foundation elements gave stability and predictability in the work being done. In other words, they helped standardization. So there's clearly a link between TWI foundation elements and what um, uh, SNC Electric have been trying to do. So a little bit about each of the interactive people on the interactive panel. Patrick is our connection to the original TWI program. You can read what's written up there. But essentially, uh, Patrick was three or four tiers away from the original program that was taken to the Japanese in uh, the 1950s. As um, you can see the link, the lineage there. He's had 30, 40 years experience in TWI. And as much as I've heard Patrick speak, I, what I do tend to find is each time I hear him speak, I learn a little bit more about the theory of TWI. He's the absolute professional as far as I'm concerned. So a bit about Boyd Rice. I uh, know Boyd quite well. Boyd has extensive, ex uh, he's from SNC Electric. Boyd has extensive experience in the frontline application of TWI skills particularly JI and JR. So he'll be a great one to throw JI and JR questions at. Um, and he did one of the best presentations I've ever seen at a summit. I think it was two years ago when he talked about the follow-up, not at what not what you do during the training, but the follow-up. Andrea is a job relations specialist in a very practical sense. So Andrea and I have a mentoring session every two weeks um, for an hour. She gives me a call on WhatsApp and we've got a PDCA cycle going on her application of or her um, development of her area experts in practicing Toyota Carter, but also combining the Toyota Carter patterns with the um, with the principles of job relations because the two go hand in glove. 
and what I love about Andrea and what I love about um, Normac is that is they re they really are applying it in a practical sense. I spoke to Andrea about being a tour site, and they were quite nervous because they don't necessarily look that flash. And I said to her, "That's the, exactly the point. Um, I, w I would like people to go to a place that may not look, um, and they may not they may not look the best or be the best. But I know that these guys are having a crack." And Andrea would be a terrific person to talk to about the trials and tribulations and the wins that she's having. And then Jesus is in his present role as operations training manager at Sloan Valve. The Valves has delivered TWI methodology. His particular focus is JM. So we've really got three people, as well as the head of the institute being Pat, who's going to be the um, facilitator, if you like. We've got three really valuable people. Boyd, who can talk deeply about JI and to some extent JR, Andrea about JR and his, uh, Jesus around uh, JM. So thank you. Uh, I'd really like you to, so just back on, whoops, back on that interactive panel. The point, it, it, it will be very interactive. They're going to have very low level of script that they'll deliver, each of them. And it's really going to be about people who attend can fire questions at these guys and uh, Andrea about their TWI experience and what they've learned through their time of practicing TWI, following what you'll have seen in a tour site, by going to a tour site. <clears throat> so thank you very much uh, for attend, listening to our webinar today. We've got the introduction over on the left side over here. We've got some uh, picked up how you can develop or advance your knowledge through the tour sites and interactive panel. Just, just in case if any of you are, are interested, Tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, we're doing a second webinar. Uh, a webinar. This was always. This has been planned for some time on TWI mastery and how we have a continuum for people's development towards that. If you want to register, I know it's short notice. If you'd like to register for that, there's a um, a link at the bottom of this presentation. If you uh, put that link into your into um, Google or whatever, sorry, put that link into your internet provider then um, you can register for tomorrow's webinar. So if I see some of you tomorrow, um, that would be fantastic. So Joe, uh, jo, thank you very, very much for participating. And Dwayne, thank you for the opportunity to conduct this webinar. Yeah, uh, Oscar, Joe, thank you so much for your uh, time and, and thanks too for your service to the Lean community uh, by your involvement with the, uh, the AME conference this year. Uh, just a couple quick notes. Um, the uh, the webinar that's happening tomorrow, you can also go to leanfrontiers.com slash online, and there's a link there. Uh, might be simpler than typing in that uh, that long digit number there, but either way, we'll get you to the same place, and uh, you can sign up for that, that webinar. Um, Oscar's been really involved in uh, helping to define a roadmap or a continuum of learning about TWI and uh, there's been some some great things come out of that. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing more from Oscar tomorrow. So until we meet uh, then in Chicago, which by the way, one last time, you can visit uh, www.ame.org slash Chicago to learn more. Uh, but until we meet in Chicago, Oscar, Joe, thanks again for your time. And thanks to everyone who participated in today's session. Have a great day.